after she had completed her research three times with similar results, coincidentally, the Russian Academy of Sciences facility where she was working started feeding all of the rats a rat chow based on genetically modified soy, and she had a brilliant idea of simply asking her colleagues after two months what was the infant mortality rate in their study. They weren't studying GMOs. They just happened to be feeding all of the infants, all, the, all of the rats, GM soy. It turns out it had skyrocketed to over 55%. This suggests it's not some um, obscure toxin that had made its way into her particular batch, but it was more likely a generic problem. In addition, when you go back further, Italian researchers fed genetically modified soy to mice, and they found that the testicles were damaged, the structure and function of the testicles were changed, including the young sperm cell. And when they looked at the offspring in, in the embryo stage, a very, very young embryo stage, they removed it from the, from the wombs of the pregnant uh, mice, who had been eating genetically modified soy or natural soy. And they found that those that had been eating genetically modified soy, the embryo DNA functioned differently. So Irma Kova, this was in, in Italy, Irma Kova in, in, uh, back in Moscow, she decided to feed GM soy also to male rats. And she showed me the picture, which I, I use in my presentation, and the, the testicles changed from pink to blue. So normally the testicles are pink, in, in, rat, in male rats, and, and she showed the controls, and they were pink, but they were blue in those that were fed genetically modified soy. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And, and, and now, what is it, eight major food crops are being genetically engineered, and now they want to go to hundreds? Oh, that's right, exactly. The, the, the goal of Monsanto, the explicit goal, is to genetically engineer 100% of all the commercial seeds in the world and patent them, and they have a plan to achieve it. Now, it doesn't stop with soy. We also have evidence of infertility with corn, and we also have it with the GM cotton. With the corn, the Austrian government fed <clears throat> genetically modified corn that was both Roundup ready and also produced its own toxic pesticide called BT. It was both, both events in the same gene, in the same uh, DNA. So they, the, they found that the more of this corn that they fed to mice, the fewer the babies they had and the smaller the babies were. And by the way, large portions of the corn and things we now eat in the United States are of these GMO varieties. Yeah, about 85% of the corn. Now, so folks, you're having your family line annihilated right now. You're being uh, just you're under assault and and you know, if you, I mean, if you walked up and punched a cop in the face, you go to prison, but they feed this to the cops and the cops just love it. I mean, I'm just pointing out that we're all being assaulted. So we've seen this also in livestock. I happened to discover a new source that changed his uh, animals to non-GM feed and found that the litters got bigger. I do know of about two dozen farmers that claim that certain varieties of GM corn caused their pigs or cows to become sterile. Some pigs had false pregnancies or gave birth to bags of water. And also in India, um, they discovered that buffalo that were feeding on genetically modified cotton cakes. These are the, the cotton seed cakes. And now these are cotton that's genetically engineered to produce its own toxic pesticide. Most of the buffalo that ate the cotton seed cakes got reproductive problems, including prolapsed uteruses, sterility, um, and abortions and premature delivery. Jeffrey, also, Jeffrey Smith, stay there. Uh, how do they think they're going to get away with this, folks? Well, they think you're dumb. They want population reduction, and they're getting it. No grandchildren for you, folks. We'll be right back. Yeah, if things don't change soon. Ladies and gentlemen, I have literally read hundreds of studies from prestigious organizations like the International Journal of Biological Sciences, extremely prestigious. Uh, here's the headline. Monsanto GMO corn linked to organ failure study reveals in lab animals, and, and they test on rabbits and guinea pigs and, and rats and mice because their metabolic system is very similar to us. Same thing with pigs or monkeys, uh, uh, primates. I mean, this isn't a joke, okay? This isn't a joke. This isn't a game. And most of the food we eat now, when you go to a Mexican food restaurant and eat corn chips, it's frying you. Uh, now, we can say no. We can take control of our society. We can demand real organic food. We can demand the feds don't change the organic descriptions to where it can be non-organic. 
This is life and death. And I know this stuff, and it's hard for me to not forget what I'm doing. But I've got to take care of my children. I've got to make sure they can have a healthy life and have grandchildren. This, this is eugenics. Make no mistake. A genetic roulette, the documented health risk of genetically engineered foods. Jeffrey M. Smith, available at Infowars.com and in his international bestseller, Seeds of Deception. Uh, you need to get these and get them out to everybody you know. Uh, he's going to be with us for one more segment. Uh, continuing, sir, uh, I mean, you can go on for hours. Uh, what about the study? Uh, I was talking to you about that genetic engineer out of England who's just had a stroke, unfortunately, uh, but I've interviewed him years ago, you know, who found similar things in his studies. Uh, uh, talk about that. Well, this is Dr. Arpad Pustai, a very interesting case. He is the world's leading researcher in his field and was granted a, a $3 million by the U.K. government to create a way to test for the safety of GMOs, which was supposed to be implemented into the EU law. But what happened was he accidentally discovered that GM foods are very dangerous, that his rats, after 10 days, had smaller brains, livers, and testicles, partial atrophy of the liver, damaged immune system, and potentially precancerous cell growth in the digestive tract. He went public with his concerns and was a hero for about two days at his institute, and then the pro-GM UK Prime Minister's office apparently placed two phone calls to the director of the institute on a Tuesday afternoon. 